maybe. Okay. Okay, so think about that again. We're seeing minus pi over 4. That means we are shifting right 4. So that means we are going to have to add pi over 4 to each of our basic x-axis markers. We're going to have to find common denominator. So the first one is not so bad. 0 plus pi over 4, we know we get pi over 4. <clears throat> but here, this pi over 2 plus pi over 4, let's think of this as 2 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4. So we get 3 pi over 4. And then let's think of pi as 4 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4. So we get 5 pi over 4. Do you see a pattern here with these? values what's the difference each time as we're adding here for our answers one pi over four. Two, two pi over four. okay so the difference between them is two pi over four which guys that should make sense right if you think about the fact that for our basic x-axis markers these basic x-axis markers are zero pi over two pi 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So the basic, the general difference between each of these is pi over 2. So now if we think about that in terms of our common denominator, it should make sense that our difference here is going to be 2 pi over 4 because that's equivalent to pi over 2, right? So if you kind of want to just continue the pattern and say, okay, I'm going to continue, continue to add 2 pi over 4, you can do that, or you can do the math, which... For many, I think that's helpful. 6 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4 gives us 7 pi over 4. And then the 2 pi, we're going to think of that as 8 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4. So we get 9 pi over 4. Okay. All right. We have got to make sure that we are showing a consistent spacing on our graph. So think about what's happening here. We are shifting. We are not going to be right at the origin. We are not starting at the origin anymore. But we have to show a consistent spacing not only between each of these values, but between 0 and what this original first value is along the way also. So think about that for a second. So as an example, if I choose to just move out one place and say that that's a distance of 1 pi over 4, then how many hash marks over do I need to move to show each of these other places, these other x-axis markers? I'm going to go two places so that I'm going, okay, add 2 pi over 4. That's our next place. Another 2 pi over 4, and so on. 1, 2, 3, 4. So for those five hash marks. Okay, so let's label those. So the pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. Okay. Um, we also need to, we obviously have to draw in our actual curve here. So let's put in our positive 1 and our negative 1. And show where that is. But then let's draw this graph so you can kind of visually see. Okay, we're starting at pi over 4. That's where we're at 0 for this sine graph. Okay, so pi over 4, we're at 0. At 3 pi over 4, we're up at 1. And then 0, and then negative 1, and 0. So still that basic sine curve, but it's shifted to the right one unit, basically, one pi over 4 unit, okay? So this consistent spacing of that 2 pi over 4, you've got to consider that. So in general, I, I want to kind of put a note here. I didn't do this first, first period, and I'm wishing now that I had. If you have graphs that are a pi over 4 or a pi over 2, that where you're adding or subtracting a pi over 4 or a pi over 2, the spacing that you're going to want to use between is two, two spaces for your x-axis markers. Okay, the spacing is going to be a little bit different for this next example that we look at. 
but are we good with understanding why we're going one space over for that pi over four and then we're going two spaces more for each of those next hash marks? Are we good there, guys? Okay, so that's the plus pi over four. Let's look at this next example because I need you to realize what can happen. If you notice on this one, this is saying we are shifting left, left this amount. So we've got to subtract. So some of this graph is gonna be to the left of the y-axis and some of it's gonna be to the right. You're gonna find on some of these graphs, you're doing most of the graph to the left of the axis rather than to the right. So we'll talk about that here in just a second. Basic cosine graph, we'll get to that part, but let's deal with the fractions here because we need common denominator again. So zero minus pi over three, we're gonna negative pi over three. Here, we need common denominator. So we've gotta do three pi over six minus two pi over six. So this is one pi over six. Um, this is three pi over three minus one pi over three. So we get two pi over three. Here, common denominator again, we're gonna do nine pi over six minus two pi over six is seven pi over six. Unfortunately, it's not quite so pretty. You don't, kind of, you don't see the pattern as well with these numbers. Um, let's do six pi over three minus one pi over three, so five pi over three. Because we have to reduce the fractions, you don't necessarily see the pattern as easily. Let's think about what this value is if, with, our, with our denominator of something pi over six. Good, there you go. The difference between all of these is three pi over six because that's what's equivalent to, to, to pi over two, right? Three pi over six is equivalent to pi over two, which is what we are adding basically in each case. So you don't really see the pattern unless you keep the numbers as the not simplified fraction. But for our answers here, we need those simplified fractions. So we need to put these values on our x-axis, but it might be helpful to think about and realize, okay, we are adding three pi over six each time, okay? Because that's gonna help us also with how we are graphing this. Okay, so the key for graphing correctly and getting the right spacing is to focus your attention on where the graph, where the x-axis numbers change from going from negative to positive. So if you notice, we have one value that is negative and we have the rest that are positive, but we need to make sure our spacing is correct. And as Luca pointed out, we need three spaces between each of these hash marks to show our space of pi over two. So we wanna consider that as well when we're looking at how we're gonna draw this. So what that's telling me then is if I'm comparing this negative pi over three, which is equivalent to negative two pi over six, and this one pi over six, I wanna go one hash mark over to show where pi over six is but I need to go two hash marks over to show where negative pi over three is. Right, I'm showing negative pi over three is equivalent to negative two pi over six, and then one space to show the one pi over six. Is that giving us the three spaces altogether? Yes, so that's important to kind of notice. and we'll. Talk more about that in a sec. And how do you know that the pi over six is there? Like, why is it only one over and not? Um, I'm kind of, I'm choosing just one space because if I go too much more, then I've got to kind of 
space that means I'm going to have to drag everything out even farther. Like if I go one, if I go two spaces for pi over six, then space. for that two pi over six, I'm having to go four spaces out. So yeah. it, it draws everything out farther. So that's a good question. We kind of, we want to try to make it so that it is not quite so drawn out that it goes way off of the graph. It might go off the graph some, but we don't want it to go way off the graph. All right, so if pi over six is in that spot, then we want to count one, two, three spaces, one, two, three spaces, one, two, three, and then we can label. So that next hash mark is at two pi over three, and then seven pi over six, and then five pi over three. Okay, so guys, it's that spacing, that's kind of the important part of these problems is getting that spacing, getting the fractions obviously, but then dealing with that spacing as well. So what other questions do you have on that? Let's go ahead and graph it. It is hard to see. It is, it is, I realize that. Okay, we are still going up, just we're doing a basic cosine curve, so we're gonna start. The other thing to remember is you're so used to starting at, like right on that y-axis and you're not starting there anymore, right? We're gonna start, our positive one is here at negative pi over three. And our next point is at zero here, so we're not, we're not crossing the, through the origin at all. That shift gets us in a position where we're not even crossing through the origin for this graph. Okay. All right. Questions on that? Okay. It just, it takes some practice with these. I realize that. Okay.